the Mandela catalog has reignited the fear of having a doppelganger or alternate version of oneself in a unique manner, with the alternate possessing unsettling physical characteristics. The topic of having a doppelganger of yourself has been known since 1796. The word doppelganger was introduced by German author Jean Paul in his 1796 novel Siebenkus. The doppelganger was generally referred to by Germans as bad omens or signs of death. Some say that the doppelganger was an attempt of the spirit to provide advice to the person they shadowed, while others say that they tried planting evil thoughts in their double's mind in hopes of confusing them. The word doppelganger means double walker as in a ghost or shadow of yourself. An easy way to remember it is that doppelganger sounds like double. A wraith or apparition of a living person, as distinguished from a ghost. The concept of the existence of a spirit double, an exact but usually invisible replica of every man is an ancient and widespread belief. The doppelganger became a popular symbol of horror literature in the modern media, but the question still baffles us to this day, why is this phenomenon so scary? This has been intriguing people for centuries. You know those creepy lookalikes who seem to be the exact duplicate of someone else. The mere existence of a doppelganger is enough to give anyone the shivers, but why is that exactly? Well, let's explore that together. First of all, the idea of having someone who looks exactly like you is just mind-blowing. It challenges our understanding of personal identity and individuality, making us question what makes us truly unique. But the real spook factor comes in when we imagine that this doppelganger could have a completely different personality, thoughts, and motivations. It's like discovering that you have a twin out there with a life of their own, and it can be a bit unsettling, to say the least. And it's not just in our imagination that doppelgangers are seen as creepy. Folklore and popular culture have often portrayed them as evil or sinister beings, adding to the fear and uncertainty surrounding them. In some cultures, encountering a doppelganger is even said to be an omen of death. Another reason why the idea of having a doppelganger is so scary is the Potential for confusion and mistrust in personal relationships. Can you imagine your friends, family, or loved ones mistaking someone else for you? That's just creepy. And the thought of a doppelganger being able to impersonate or deceive others using their identical appearance just adds to the fear factor. But let's not forget that doppelgangers have also been portrayed in works of fiction as harbingers of danger or as agents of chaos and destruction. This only adds to the mystique surrounding them and makes us wonder what would happen if we ever encountered our own doppelganger. And the fact that doppelgangers are often seen as being beyond our control just adds to the fear and uncertainty surrounding them. The idea of having an identical twin with a life and personality of their own that is completely separate from ours is both frightening and mysterious, making us wonder what would happen if we ever encountered our own doppelganger. Why is this concept in horror media so unique and terrifying? To answer this question, Let's revisit the Mandela Catalog. The Mandela Catalog isn't just frightening from a psychological perspective, it's also because of the uncanny valley effect of the alternates. Their faces are based on police sketches and since they resemble humans in many ways, their slight alterations make them appear unnatural, causing discomfort. The thought of an evil clone is frightening. Many writers, producers, and directors share this belief. Doppelgangers can easily be incorporated into storylines, but they truly shine in the thriller and horror genres. Our conscious self is a fundamental aspect of our existence, and the thought of it being taken away by a malevolent version of ourselves is enough to cause chills. The idea of a darker version of ourselves let loose to wreak havoc is a nightmare come to life. In conclusion, the fear of doppelgangers and evil clones is a timeless and universal concept that continues to captivate audiences. As we delve deeper into the concept, we are reminded of our own mortality and the fragility of our sense of self. The idea of a darker version of ourselves, with motives unknown, is enough to send shivers down our spines and make us question what truly makes us who we are. As we gaze upon the Mandela Catalog, we are forced to confront our deepest fears and the haunting possibility that our own shadow could one day turn against us. So, beware of what lurks in the shadows, for it just might be your doppelganger.